Hey, uh, hello, everyone. So uh, the presentation will be in as a demo. So if demo goes allow us, it will all go smoothly. So first, first thing off, uh, we have quite a recent new feature in Lotus called Lotus Lite, where you can connect your Lotus daemon to another daemon, and it allows you to use most functions of Lotus, especially functions connected with uh, wallets and multisig without having to locally sync the daemon. So in this case, I have Lotus synced on the server and I'm gonna to SSH into it and forward uh, the port uh, to, my, to my local machine. So let's do that. Then we can uh, ask Lotus for, you would use Lotus uh, auth API info the same way you would use it for, uh, for uh, the uh, miner. So I'll, I would set up a API info over here and then we can run the uh, Lotus daemon light. What this allows us to do is now this daemon, uh, my local daemon talks with, to the remote daemon over a sage or it might be on local network. And it allows us to locally do uh, most things connected with uh, wallets. So we can look at the list of our wallets. You can see I have one wallet address. Uh, and for example, I can create a new BLS wallet because that's a SecP address. I pre-created it because it's easier not to wait for the first send. So I will create a new wallet, new BLS wallet. So this is my new BLS address. As you can see, I have two wallets now, uh, two addresses now. So I can do simple send from my default address uh, because it's marked as default to this address and let's send some nanofills to it. So now we got the uh, the transaction CID. That's awesome because I didn't have to sync the node and after some time it will show up on wallet list that it received it. Uh, during that time we can tr uh, set up ledger integration with, with uh, Lotus Lite, uh, Lite Daemon. So if we go to our Lotus config under wallet section, we can enable ledger integration, uh, which the uh, ledger software was uh, written by the Zondex, the Zondex team. Um, and uh, after we have it enabled, we can create a new wallet uh, with SecP, uh, SecP ledger address. So it's also a SecP address, but it uses the storage on, on the ledger. First, I need to enter my pin code into the ledger. So if I do that, uh, and I did it incorrectly. Give me one more second. <laughs> now I can create a new ledger address. And it will ask me on my ledger device to confirm it. It also prints the address in the log so I can look, oh, is it the same address that Lotus is telling me to just verify that the software is not lying somewhere along the way. Maybe my computer is hacked or something like that. So I accepted the address and the address was created. As uh, addresses in Ledger are deterministic, this address, I've used this address previously. So if we do Lotus list, let me make it a bit smaller so everything fits on screen better. You can see that this address has already two, around two fill in it. So that's an awesome feature of using Ledger as your wallet. Even if you, I lose this Lotus repo by like RMRF Lotus, I still have that address. We can also see that my BLS ad address already accepted the transaction. So we can send, for example, from that BLS address. Uh, uh, to my ledger and we can send some, some more dust into it. Uh, you cannot send a full amount. Uh, currently, we might enable like automatic estimation for when you're trying to send full amount, but like I should be able to send almost all of it to the ledger and I can transfer from the ledger address. If I try to transfer from the ledger address, the ledger device will ask me to confirm the transaction and uh, it will just, uh, it will show me all the information about the transaction, information about the transaction. So now on my ledger device, I see that I'm sending to 
address ending in INA from address ending in 3KA with nones two with the value, gas limit, everything. And I can approve to sign the transaction. And now I got the transaction CD. So yeah, uh, we can look at my mempool. I have nothing in my mempool. So that transaction supposedly already went through. Uh, yeah, so that's the basics of using Ledger for uh, for your wallet. It's especially useful, uh, the Lotus, uh, Lotus Lite feature is especially use useful for Ledger because usually you wouldn't have your Ledger plugged into your like at home PC that's running always or a server, remote server where you have your Lotus running. Uh, and this allows you to simply plug in your Ledger into a laptop or even uh, plug in your Ledger into laptop startup Lotus Lite, which can connect either to your server to remote server, your PC, or even some uh, API providers. I think uh, I think it also works with Glyph nodes uh, online. So, and you can just simply send, send transactions. Uh, yeah. So, to set up a ledger, you you'll want to look at the uh, guide on docs falcon.io because you need to install ledger ledger application. Uh, yeah. We can also now try creating multisig wallets. So multisig wallets allow you to to split the custody of a given account across uh, multiple signers, so multiple separate uh, separate addresses. So, for example, it might be you want to split the custody between your key, your uh, and your backup key, right? You do, if, you, if I lose that key and I lose all of the backups, I might have some key in cold storage in the, maybe on a ledger somewhere or something like that. So it's uh, never lost. Or I might want to split the custody of that uh, token, of this, uh, these tokens among group of three people out of five. So we can go to uh, Lotus MSIG and here we can see all the multi-sig commands we can use. So we can use multisig create. Uh, sorry. So we can say, uh, let's, let me list my addresses. So I can create uh, a, a multisig wallet with two out of two addresses. So let's say I'll use this address and this address. So this one is my ledger address. This one is my uh, local, like in Lotus key. And I can tell it to use required of one. So any of those two addresses will be able to uh, send funds from and to the uh, multisig. So let's create it. And lots of slide multisig is not working for some reason. Uh, yeah, so that's a demo for, for you. Uh, so yeah, but the workflow would be, you would create the multisig, you would get a multisig address uh, for that multisig, then you would just transfer some funds to it. So let's say I would transfer one Falcon from uh, from this to given multi, uh, the multisig address I get. So I would do this exact command and then I can use all the commands in multisig to either propose a new transaction. So I can propose a a transaction from a uh, uh, transaction using the multisig address I, I got to my, let's say my, I want to pay out out of my multisig to this address uh, with a, like, I want to pay out 0.5 Falcons out of it, right? So then I would propose, and if the multisig, uh, multisig required value is one, then this will just go through. If the multisig required account was, for example, 
two, then I would have to, after doing that, this command, I will get a transaction ID, which I, I then can use to approve a transaction from using the different key. So that would use this, this propose would use my default key. So the one marked as default over here. And then I could, uh, I could approve it using my second key if my multisig was requiring two approvals to transfer any, any uh, value out of it. So yeah, uh, Lotus multisig uh, command group also has uh, many commands for uh, adding adding signers to the multisig, swapping out signers out of multisig, so on. So if I wanted to, as an example, add a signer uh, on my third key as a signer to the multisig, I would ask uh, pass in the uh, the multi uh, the multisig address and some signer let's say my T3 key. If I wanted uh, Lotus to automatically increase the required threshold from one to two after added, adding that signer, I can tell it to in increase the threshold. All right. And I think that's most of the basic uh, operations on multisig. It works transparently with ledger devices. If so, if, if you are able to send a uh, uh, Falcon from a ledger using Lotus Lite or Lotus, you you, sh you are able to also perform multisig operations using your ledger device. Yeah. Uh, there is also one additional feature of wallet. You can set up what's called remote wallet in Lotus. So on your server, you can set up a reverse connection to your local wallet, which can be a ledger device. So then using the commands on your server, so on my server here, I would be able to uh, send, uh, send Falcon using a remote wallet feature. Uh, I'm not sure if there are good docs on it yet, probably not, but we should write some. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Kuba. Um, I have uh, some a uh, couple questions for you. Uh, so number one is, uh, what, are there any any new and exciting features for the wallets in Lotus that might be coming in the future? So uh, we are looking at introducing uh, in Lotus HD wallets and uh, in uh, in Lotus wallet encryption, so password protection, which is a basic feature we just didn't get to ship yet. Uh, yeah, apart from that. Uh, Probably, uh, probably some better integration allowing in-browser apps to connect to the wallets, uh, connect to, a, uh, to to the wallet, and ask for permission to send a transaction. Yeah, that's great. And are there any recommendations that you have for, say, um, uh, miners or other other operators who have keys uh, on their uh, associated with Lotus, um, either using Ledger or some other um, tooling? So optimally, your owner key should be a ledger key. As far as I know, it, uh, it's, uh, it's like it, uh, the owner key of a miner is very, very important key. It allows you to completely change the ownership, ownership of the miner or changing the worker keys and changing the, uh, uh, the control keys. But also, if you're ho holding any like any amount of Falcons, a significant amount of Falcon, I would also uh, recommend using a ledger device. But either way, always back up your keys if you're using in Lotus, uh, in Lotus key store, which is the key store is located in uh, your Lotus demo slash key store. And uh, yeah, make sure to have it backed up. And if you're storing any any high value amount of Falcon, use, just use Ledger, it's way safer. And if you're using Ledger, for sure, remember to have your uh, recovery phrases somewhere safe where it cannot be destroyed at once with the Ledger device. So probably some somewhere and somewhere else. Great, sounds good. Well, thank you very much.